Hi, welcome back to the show. You're watching Your Future, Your Finances. Uh, we're continuing our conversation regarding charitable planning with Ralph Serpy of the Baltimore Community Foundation. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. So uh, you're working with an individual, um, and they want to talk about charitable planning. How does your organization help them? Well, we sit down and start exactly where they are right now. So we look at where they're currently giving and what motivates that giving. And we love to bring um, extended family around for that conversation to get really down deep to the, to the values and where that motivation comes from. And it really does um, uh, surprise extended family as to why that is and how that motivation is. And one of the things about creating a charitable plan is to really get to the root of um, is your expectation that you want your children to continue your philanthropy, mm -hmm. what matters to you? Or is what's important um, for your, ch or do you want your children to be generous? Mm -hmm. And some people really want their giving to continue. And in that case, we can create a charitable plan that continues their giving. Some sort of, people don't care. Sort of mandates that by the future generation. Absolutely, that, that hand goes beyond the grave. It's a very <laughs> steady hand. But some folks just want to make sure that their children are generous no matter what direction that goes. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so there's a way to do that as well. There's a way to plan for that as mm -hmm. well. So if somebody has not done this uh, before but they're interested in it, how do you think they should start? You know, we, we go back to start with what's important. What, if you think about what you can't possibly um, live without mm -hmm. in your life, and sometimes when you ask children that question, it seems to be puppies <laughs> and firemen. <laughs> and as you get further along, um, people start thinking about education um, and the things that have really been a pivot point in their life, organizations that have helped them, people that have helped them. And you really get down deep into um, what's helped them and what's healed them. And you can get into some great, meaningful conversations, and from there, um, really come to what's important. Now, sometimes that's serial giving. What's important to you as a young person sort of morphs and changes, and as there are impact moments in your life, um, you're touched by an educational institution, a hospital, an organization that you become a part of, um, uh, you serve on the board of an organization, you volunteer for an organization, you want to be able to give back to that organization over time. Mm -hmm. And you never know, um, uh, an organization never knows when they're touched by an organization, when they touch a volunteer, whether or not they'll come back. Mm -hmm. um, I also think it's important for folks to sit down and write a letter to either their family yeah. uh, that talks about the spirit in which they make a gift. And they should say, here's the technical side of my gift. I'm giving X amount of dollars to an organization for a particular reason. Mm -hmm. But here's the spirit of this gift, and here's the intent behind this gift. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to do that for a really big gift at the end of their life. Here's something that anyone can do. We're approaching the end of year where people make annual gifts to organizations. They've made gifts to sometimes for three years, sometimes for 30 years. Why not this year? in the spirit of the giving season. Include with that check, whether it's $5, $500, or $5,000 or more, include a note to that organization and say, I believe in you and here's why. Or I make this annual gift to your organization because. And tell them why you're doing it. Hmm. Set up that expectation and let them know why they're receiving that support from you. Yeah, I bet that's not done very often. It's not done at all. Mm, yeah. Um, and for somebody who is doing some uh, charitable planning uh, but wants to assess, uh, you know, how much or, or uh, I suppose where it's going, um, what advice would you have for them? I go back to the top and say giving is a learned value. Mm -hmm. Share, share, share. Mm -hmm. Talk to your family, talk to your community about why giving is important. Mm -hmm. Because in order to make Maryland the most generous state in the country, in order to make um, future generations as generous as past generations, we need to talk to people about why we give and the importance of giving. Mm -hmm. We cannot tax our way out of the issues we find today. We can't. Mm -hmm. We have to do it through the generosity of every one of us. And we have to talk to our professional advisors, our financial advisors, our professional advisors, our legal advisors, and 
I would say if you're doing it, talk to your financial advisors and your professional advisors about including a charitable plan as part of your estate. And if your professional advisor isn't prepared to have that conversation, go find one who is. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let's know. wrap up with the website. How can people find you? Um, uh, to contact uh, me at the Baltimore Community Foundation, you can go to bcf.org. I'm happy to share our legacy planning guide for free. Contact me, Ralph Serpy, at the Baltimore Community Foundation for a free legacy planning guide. To find a local community foundation here in Maryland, go to mdcommunityfoundations.org and there are 16 community foundations locally where they can find their local community foundation. And that's all over uh, Maryland. So Across it, uh, Maryland and uh, covering Northern Virginia through the Community Foundation for the National Capital Region, which covers M Montgomery County here. Good. Fantastic. That does it for us. You've been watching Your Future, Your Finances. I'm your host, Brian Kuhn. Thank you very much.